Hi everyone, I've come to share a little tutorial with you today. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who left me marvellous comments on my Instagram when I posted a little video and pictures of these. But um, I do want to say I know lots of people have used CD covers in their journal so please don't think this was um, completely my idea. I think it may have been Eva from Bohemian Crafting who I saw use these the first time and that's why I purchased these ones from Etsy. Um, but before I go any further, as um, I've had so much support and it really overwhelms me every single time I look at my YouTube account and I had so much support to get to where I am from other crafters and I know that you guys are so brilliant at helping new crafters out. Um, I would really appreciate it if you could go and check out Treasure Keeping. It's two words. Keeping is a lowercase k on YouTube. It's Maya and her sister. Um, they have a little tutorial on their channel and I, I hope Maya is going to do some more. Uh, I found Maya through Instagram. She has some lovely books and I would really appreciate if you could support Maya as much as everyone has supported me. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, back to the tutorial. These are made obviously from the CD covers and they are designed to go into journals as a pocket and you'll obviously see the tag. And all I used was scraps of paper. That was basically what um, brought this about is I had so many scraps of paper, little bits of Edith Holden paper and other flower books. I just wanted to use some of those scraps so this is what I came up with. Now I'm going to show you how to make the envelope from scratch and I also want to show you um, where things can go wrong. So this is obviously one of the little CD pockets which I just cut the top off, uh, distressed it, slid an image in here and glued it down and then popped on a little embellishment from Tim Holtz. Sorry, I'm going to sit down. <laughs> um, so I thought, wow, I have one of these. I can I can cut a hole and I can make them, but the reach of this is not big enough. <laughs> um, you could still use this if you wanted and do something similar, but I'm going to show you how to make one with a square window. So the first thing, you know what I'm like, um, templates. Love, love me a template because I can just use it over and over again. So the measurements that you will need are, you need to make a piece of, this is 300 mil cardstock. I always call it mil, it's not, it's GSM, 300 GSM, 17 by eight and a half plus two centimetres for the tabs. So it's 17 centimetres by 10 and a half centimetres. And this doesn't mean a lot to me, but this is inches if you use inches. So that's the measurements. Okay, so I just need to open my board. And I apologize when this goes in and out of focus. Um, so we want 17 centimeters by 10 and a half centimeters. And that is the start of our template. Now what I did was I straight away took this out and folded it in half. I'm just going to do this as quickly as I can. Obviously you need to <laughs> probably spend a little bit more time on it than, than I will because I've already got a template that works for me. So I pop this into my cutter, let me just check you can see, and I bring it across to one centimetre here. So um, I bring that down and I bring the cutter, these are my guidelines, I bring that down to halfway. And then what I do, because I don't have a scoreboard, I can't be doing with changing this to the scoreboard bit every time, so I just take my bone folder and use that to score a line. 
So now what I do is turn that over and do exactly the same on this side. So I bring that down to halfway, use my bone folder to score the second half. So that is that for now. Just put that down there. So then take my scissors and just um, what would you call this? Mitre, I suppose. Mitre those corners. Like that. So these will now bend. It doesn't really matter because you don't need it to bend on your template. So now we have to cut this window. Now I Oh, I found this bit a bit difficult and it took me several attempts to work something out but what I did was I took another piece of card let me just double check the measurement yep and I cut a square five and a half by five and a half and that's going to be our window size so this bit is kind of done by eye. It doesn't really matter which way around you have it. And I can't get my head right over, so I'm hoping this is gonna be okay. So I just plomp, plopped it, plonked it, <laughs> popped it in the middle, took a pencil and, oh, stuck me, and just drew around my square. You can see that I do things in a very technical way but it kind of works for me, so that's that's how I that's how I roll. And then I take my ruler, and again I'm getting out my craft knife, guys. So look away if you're squeamish. Probably safest, and I just cut that square out, and I'll try and cut it out so it is straight. Sorry guys, this is one bit that I don't want to rush while you're watching because um, I'm a bit accident prone and I do tend to cut myself quite a lot. I actually had, um, had a, I've got a sticker making machine and I did turn, I think my first, uh, after I got I can't remember which new cutter it was, but after I got a cutter and I had to have a plaster on my finger, um, I used my sticker machine to make my plaster into a sticker and that's in one of my journals. <laughs> it's a bit sad, isn't it? So now we have our template and you can see how that's gonna work as our, as our template. Okay, so I'm gonna use a piece of craft paper for this one. And it is as simple as popping it onto a piece of paper. You can use white paper for this. It certainly doesn't have to be craft paper. And because it's 300 GSM cardstock, you can very easily draw around. And you can, um, what I did was um, to make, I think I made five of these. Um, I just literally drew around and drew around and drew around. And, and got all of this bit done first. So, technical piece, again, cut it out. So we cut, cut it out. And it's really difficult when you've got camera above you to not lean forward as you would in real life. I hope I'm in frame. As you would in real life to, um, because you do everything at a funny angle when you do a tutorial. I don't know if other people find the same thing. So we now have this and now what we need to do is cut that out in exactly the same way as we did our template. And again, this is probably not going to be as accurate as it could be because I'm not putting my head directly over to get a good view. So these are a lot easier to make than the um, double-ended envelopes I made previously.
but thanks for all of the lovely, lovely comments that you left for those. It was it was brilliant, and the tags. It was. I was very surprised how many people watched. Oh, now I haven't cut this out straight. It's not straight, so I do apologise. And like I said, please spend a bit more time when you make yours, if you if you decide to make any. So you can see I've got that's going to really bother bother me. I'm going to have to have another little trim of that. I'm afraid. Even though, yeah, it's going to bother me. Oh, I can't get out. Get the old scissors. There we go. Right, so we are now here. If you wanted to distress the edges at this point, you can. Oh, I'm so sorry, guys. That's really cool. Okay, um, my children will be home soon, so I, I can't redo this, I'm afraid. So I'm going to take my um, Distress Ink, and what we do want to do is kind of um, ink this before we put the, envelope, the um, window in, only because um, I did have to baby wipe the CD holder ones. When you ink them, you do get ink onto the... Um, onto the window and you kind of have to baby wipe that off so I've just used um, my new thanks to Abby um, I saw her use this on her little snippet tutorial the ground espresso um, so I had to go and purchase that and then we just line that up close that off um, I suppose we could fold these in now actually just fold these. I'm actually going to stick these on the inside though because it gives it a, a better finish. But I'm just using the side of the envelope as a guide where to fold. So you fold that, open that up again, and this time I'm going to use my vintage photos. Check I'm still in frame, and I'm just going to distress round this. I really like the um, the kind of colour this gives you on the craft paper. So, oh, I didn't get my mat out. So I had a little comment from Suzanne about how mucky my mat was after the last tutorial. So I was gonna use a nice mat this time, but didn't. So sorry about my mucky mat. Okay, so we'll distress the edges once we've finished putting the envelope together. So we've now got um, this, you know, the majority of this done. So, the next bit is we kind of all have packaging. So what I've done is I've cut out, which you probably can't see, but I have cut out a little square and it's just big enough for the window. And I also want to put a tiny bead of glue along the top there as well as around the window. So when you pop something into the envelope, you're not gonna catch this kind of um, film. And I'm using my Fabri-Tac because obviously if you use a water-based glue, it's going to warp your um, your paper and it's going to warp the um, window. Now this is, um, it's getting close to the end this one, so it's not brilliant. And I'm just going to put, like I said, a little bead or a big blob even <laughs> at the top there. A little bit of that off. Grab my film and this is the tricky bit while you're on camera. Yep, that's not too bad. And we just, I always push outwards away from the window so you don't push the glue into that window area. And as you can see that has had some seep out at the top there. So now we have a window you see that we have the window so now what we need to do is put some kind of image at the back in the background now I did have an absolute ton of scraps for this however I'm getting a bit short now and I think this is probably all I have left 
um, without starting to cut out some new, new pages. But they always come along, don't they? Scraps. Have I made that too small now? No. So what I do is, this is a lot easier than the CDs, to be perfectly honest, because when, you, when you're trying to do this with a CD, what I was doing is I was sliding the piece in, trying to line it up, turning it over, and trying to put glue in here um, while it was in the envelope. So this is a lot easier making them yourself. So what I do is line up the picture in the window, turn it over, um, I'm not going to use that glue simply because I'm doing it one handed and that one's a bit pants now. Here we go again. Line it up, lay it down. The one place you want the glue for sure is along that top edge. Anywhere else, you don't need to worry too much because it, your image, your image or your journaling card will slot in. But you do need it along that top edge. I've done this wrong, haven't I? No, I haven't. There we go. Fold that over, and you've got your image, and it is just on that little back, back bit there. So if you feel like you need to, you can now kind of go back in and pop a little bit of glue where you missed, and make a mess, like I do. So if you get glue anyway, you do need to make sure that's dry before you close your envelope. Um, otherwise you're going to make a mess, like I have. Okay, yep, nice big mess. Right, now I'm not going to use that glue for the next part. I am going to use my fabric tack. Now I'm going to fold these in, fold them down. Pop a little bit of glue. Oh, this glue really is a bit manky now. I have got a new one, but there is still glue left in here, so I really don't want to open it yet. And I'm not sure whether the central heating actually contributes to making this glue a bit sticky. I'm sure, I'm sure it doesn't help. So, so this is the bit you're going to stick into your journal or onto a tag or lots of options. And there we go, we have a little envelope here. Now, I've already distressed this a little bit, but I'm gonna go back around now with my um, ground espresso because I really like that dark edge. And the final step is, if you want to, you don't have to do it, is just to put an embellishment onto um, the outside of the envelope. Now. Um, I've got some more coming, but I have actually really, really used up my stash and I don't have an awful lot left. I got these from lovely Chantelle. Thank you, Chantelle. Um, so, oh, that actually works. But these are just the wallflower um, bits and pieces. Oh, what's that one? No. Okay. So... I hope this is not going on too long guys. Uh, I'm just going to ink around the edges and I dislike doing this as much as I do fussy cutting because it's so difficult to get into all those little bits on some of these. I think they should come ready distressed. <laughs> ready inked. Let's face it, most of us use vintage photo, don't we, for this? So I think they should be vintage photoed ready, <laughs> if that's the thing. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to decide where to put this. I think it's going to have to go in that bottom corner, which is where I end up putting most of them, to be honest. That's just a bit of a habit. Um, I actually like these hanging over the edge slightly, and I like them, some of them, when they're a bit bigger than, than they should be. So I think they look quite cool hanging over. Mm. 
Yeah, I'm going to put it like that. There we go. So, that is our finished envelope, which is kind of not exactly the same, but these are more sturdy to be honest because you can pick, you can use anything for these and I'm going to show you a few I made earlier so um, made this one and again it's with the um, oh. oh yeah that's open that's fine craft paper and that one is also um, with craft paper but what I've used for this one is um, I haven't put a picture at the back and I've used the Tim Holtz vellum you know those little squares that I always end up with so many of those not knowing what to do with them so I've used that and then I've matched the flower on that one um, what's the other one? this one I've put a really oversized flower here because I really like that that would probably have to go in a bigger journal um, but I've used Edith Holden paper to make this one you can see the back and this one I've used Edith Holdeth, Edith Holden paper again um, it's not Edith Holden in the inside that's the Victorian flower album um, but this time I used tissue paper so um, that's actually vellum it's not tissue paper but um, yeah it's vellum <laughs> so when you can still pop a tag in here but if you don't have a tag in there you can see the image at the back and this one Again, I've used tissue paper. No, I've not. I've used vellum. It's a vellum, vellum pocket. Um, but I've used a stamp to stamp onto that one. And the ink is on the inside, so that looks... It's not so black, because the only ink that I've got that really stays on is stays on. And if you watch my shopping trip, you know that um, we've got black. And then again, I've used an oversized flower on this one. And you can see the yellow image behind so um, I hope you find it useful I hope you can obviously make these any size you like but again just in case you these are the sizes I've used and um, if you could please I'd really appreciate you going over to treasure keeping on YouTube um, she is absolutely lovely I've had a, had a little conversation with her and she is absolutely lovely. So thank you for watching. Thanks again for all your lovely comments and your support. And I'll see you soon. Bye.